And welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. Opening day 2022 on MLB The Show. It's the Minnesota Twins going up against the Chicago White Sox. Just about set to go and towing the slab. Lance Lynn. Chris is up three ERA for him a year ago. Well, when your numbers are coming in under three as a starting pitcher that's going out there every fourth or fifth day, taking the ball from... Oh, now this is blasted way back there on its way. Gone. He sends it out of here. Just like that, they move in front. It's one nothing. Well, so much for settling into this game, boo. No courtesy first pitch take right there. He was ready from the second he stepped into the box, got a pitch to hit, jumped all over it. I tell you what, that'll fire up the guys in your dugout. Foul ball there. And now the one. Ground ball to the right side. And he takes it himself for the out. Joe Maurer getting ready to hit. This guy's turned into one of the best catchers in the National League. That's a laser base hit. And that's going to kick into the corner. Next is the speedy first baseman, Harmon Killebrew. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. To third might be two. To second for one. Double play, and that'll do it for the inning. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run. It's now 1-0. Bottom of the first. Pitching in our game today, Burt Blylevin. And as usual with him, Singy, I think we can expect plenty of strikeouts. Yeah, Boogie's racked up over 3,000 strikeouts in his career, so expect to see more of the same in this one. Comes up empty on the swing, 0-2 now. Swing and a miss, and he's down on strikes. One gone, bottom half of the first. Leori Garcia up to the plate. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. The pitch. And that curveball drops in there for a strike. Here comes the pitch. And a swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Well, anytime you can punch out the top two guys in a lineup to start an inning, got to be feeling pretty good out there on the mound because when you think of just having a distraction, table setters on the base paths, and all of a sudden you're dealing with the number three hitter, any distraction can cause you to serve up a cookie, and instead of it being a solo shot, it's a two- or three-run homer. He swings and fouls one off. Man, so close to the immaculate inning as that foul ball spoils it. He's got him. Strikes out the side to begin the game. What a start. New inning getting started. Here's a big power threat. Torrey Hunter. Lynn back to work. Down the line, it's a base hit. Around first, digging for two. And he pulls in with a double for his first hit of the year. We all saw his hit hard, but how hard was it, Singy? StatCast is here with the answer. Yeah, Boog, it says the exit velo was 113 miles per hour, and it looked every bit of it, didn't it? I mean, just an impressive swing of the bat, and clearly he saw it out of the pitcher's hand no problem. Base hit and a run in to score. Singy, he squared that one up in a big way. So let's take another look at it with StatCast. Dead head assemble. Just incredible power in this swing as it came off the bat at 117 miles per hour. He saw it all the way. Really good weight transfer and just demonstrated some exceptional bat speed with that swing. Man, impressive. Hard hit, right side. To his left, knocks it down. That leaves him without a throw, and they don't get the out. Man at first, and now for the Twins, Byron Buxton. Byron 
And there's something you don't see very much in today's game, the pitch out. Good speed on the base pass. He handles the bat very well. I wouldn't be surprised if the skipper puts on some type of hit and run or run and hit. Two zero. Nice grab. So one run in the inning on this base hit, and it's two zip. Bottom of the inning, Yasmani Grandal up to hit. Leading off for the White Sox. And there's the strike. Good pitch down around the knees. You want to be there all game in a park like this. A pop up sometimes will carry out. Next one misses, and it's one and one. Swings through that one. I guess you throw it that hard, you can get away with locations like that right down the middle. But I still think it's a dangerous pitch. Don't want to do it again. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And there's one away. Here's Aloy Jimenez. In the air out to center. Buxton makes the grab. And there's two down. Fell off to a great start. He's really cruising out there on the mound. He's got a chance to get through these first two innings with under 20 pitches. That could set him up to go deep into this game. A.J. Pollock takes a strike there as he stands at the plate now. The 0-1 is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. This lineup's going to have to find a way to make him work a little harder out there on the mound. I mean, he is just mowing them down. He's settling in. You've got to make him uncomfortable. Maybe step out of the box, call timeout, do whatever it takes. This to center field. Polanco drifts towards it and puts the squeeze on that. And that is that. Down in order go the White Sox. And they're down 2-0. Set for the start of the inning. And here's the Twins leadoff guy, Paul Molitor. And here it comes. Oh, this ball is crushed into left field. It's on its way and gone. He's done it again. His second homer of the game. And they add to their lead. It's 3-0. One pitch, one swing, one home run. Yeah, you could say that's efficiency right there. Didn't need much time in the box to make an impact. Digging in, Rod Carew. And a base hit. Now, no waiting around right there. He was ready to swing it on the first pitch. He put a great swing on that ball. Took the barrel right to it. Nice extension as well. 105 exit velocity. That tells you everything you need to know about that swing. And now they've got... Oh, now this one's high and deep. Way back there. On its way. Gone. His first homer of the year, and they add on. It's five zip. Well, he went up there, oh, oh, looking to do damage. I think he had his sight set on that pitch. He went and got it and circled the bases. Now here is Harmon Killebrew. This one smoked out to left, and it drops in, but a good job to keep it in front. Nice line drive to the pull side, met it out front, but just stayed through it nice enough and ripped it into the outfield. Next to hit, Torrey Hunter. He swings and drives one out to deep left field. Feeling for the wall as he makes the catch. Here on the south side, and so you spent a few years playing for the White Sox. What are those memories like? Great city. Chicago is along the lines of New York and, and Boston in terms of just the buzz of the city. For me, it be Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. Carlos Correa will circle the bags. His first homer of the year, it's 7-0. J. 
just an excellent swing all the way around and it had that sound coming off the bat that gets everyone's attention. Got a pitch to drive short to the baseball squared it up and the backspin carried it out of here. New arm out of the bullpen Ronaldo Lopez big deficit here but he's still got a job to do the batter now Jorge Polanco he's over one. And first offering is fouled off. What are the things you love about the city of Chicago? I mean, great sports town, but you're talking about a city with some amazing landmarks, some amazing architecture, and obviously the water as well. Yeah, like now this down the right field line, fair ball should be extra bases. And he's got a double. That ball was absolutely ripped, 111 off the bat. And I'm pretty sure it started to whistle after it left he's the bat. I think I heard that too, Boog. And these are the moments we appreciate when we can look at StatCast and just see exactly what the data is. Always so much fun to see what numbers pop up. Base knock right field. In comes the run from third to add on. It's 8-0. So, Singy, now let's dive into the numbers, courtesy of StatCast. Do you even feel contact being made when you hit a ball that hard? No, I don't think so, Boog. I mean, that's just the best feeling in the world as a hitter. You square it up perfectly, and it's like you didn't even swing the bat. And there are times the ball feels heavy off your bat. You know it, but this is not one of those cases. He sent this one flying 114 miles per hour, so that's flexing your muscles a little bit. Back to the leadoff spot in the Twins lineup. Now it's the power speed combo. There's a swing and a drive. Gone! He flexes his power with that swing. His third home run of the game. And they add a run. It's 11-0. Singy, he's been red hot. Yeah, another big swing of the bat for him. Man, he is really seeing the ball well in this one. New pitcher for the one. That one ripped. Hits the fence. And into second with one away. That's a double. Drove that ball nicely. Put a great swing on it. And it jumped off his bat. Kind of put it all together there. And he's rewarded with the double. So man aboard. Joe Maurer. The next twin up to hit. And that's in there for strike one. Just the flair here, whether it's, you know, jazz music, whether it's the restaurants and food, so many great things in this city that, you know, players, they don't have a hard time being convinced to come. Now this ball is well hit. This one's got a chance. And brings it in at the wall. Runner tags it second, and he's up to third safely with two gone. So now it's the four-hole hitter, Harmon Killebrew, one for two. Drilled the left center way back there, and that is gone. He'll touch them all. His first homer of the year, it's 13-0. Two outs, bases empty. And next for Minnesota, Torrey Hunter. This guy with big time power and an elite defender. And a pop off, right side, foul territory. Puts the squeeze on it, and that will end the inning. Back here at the ballpark, ready to go for the last half of the inning. And now it's Luis Robert. First pitch, just. misses and that one wrapped foul ball to strike swing and a miss well every pitcher wants run support and having a lead is nice but it can be challenging for some guys I think keeping the mindset to attack instead of trying to be too fine and have too much finesse go after hitters and get quick outs Bounce to the right. Takes it himself. One gone, bottom of the third inning. Here's the White Sox DH. Gavin Sheets. In there for strike one. 
Oh, and one. And there's a ball. And he deals. That's a ball. ball and three. downstairs. Count is three and one. The wind and the pitch. That one out to right. Hunter in position. And there's two away. Batting nut. Here is Yoan Moncada. First pitch doesn't find the zone. And the righty deals. Swings through that one out in front that time. 1-1 one, one now. Out to short. Correa picks it up. Gathers and throws to first. And that is that. Welcome back. And here comes Carlos Correa. Ruiz back to work. And first offering is fouled off. And a pitch. Line drive. Jimenez makes the play, and there's one down. So up next, Jorge Polanco. That one fouled off. And he's down 0-2 as he swings through it. Clearly all in on the fastball right there, but it was a changeup. Bottom just fell out of it. He's going to have to make an adjustment. That one to first. Could be extra bases. Takes the turn. He's digging for second. In safely. It's a double and his second hit. Well, he found himself behind in the count right there, but he didn't give in. There was nothing cheap about the way he got that one through the infield. That was ripped. Caught out in front and... Didn't get under it like he would have liked, but definitely put a good swing on it. Runner takes off. Throw. Tag. Ow! Grandal with a quick release. Next pitch has popped up. Anderson on the run, throw to first. Not in time, and he reaches safely. Here's Byron Buxton. Did a nice job getting there. Good throw, but very difficult to get anybody on that one as far as you had to go and throw. You know? Yeah, no question. And that's a base hit. So that's two straight, two out hits. First pitch swing in, went up there with a the plan to be aggressive. I could watch base hits like that one all day long, and so could every hitting coach in the league. Just a nice line drive into center field. He's going, he's Runners going. on the move. There's a ball. Throw to third. Too late. Save. Double steal. Two outs, two in scoring position. Ripped on the ground a second to first, and that is that. Back here on the south side, John Chambi and Chris Singleton with you. And leading off the bottom of the fourth, Tim Anderson. And a foul ball. The wind of the pitch. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. And a pitch. This one popped up. Foul ground first base side. Yeah, they take care of Anderson for the out. And there's one down. Now batting second baseman, Leori Garcia. Leori Garcia steps to the plate for the White Sox. Swings through that oh, one. 0-1. Oh, one. The White Sox still looking for their first hey. hit in this one. Next offering is in for a strike. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. And he's down on strikes for the second time today. 
Oh, there's a three-pitch strikeout. He can do whatever he wants with the baseball right now. Two outs, base is empty. Jose Abreu up to hit. In there, and it's 0-1. Next offering is foul back. Stays alive. Here's the 0-2. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. 1-2-3 go the White Sox. Still looking up at a 13-0 score. We go to the top of the fifth. Now it's the DH, Rod Carew. He's kind of an outlier, especially when guys are consciously sacrificing contact to deliver power. And a pitch. Strike one. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Joe Kelly preparing to come on if needed. Righty delivers. Swing and a foul back. That's out of play. Liner, base hit. Now batting. So up next for Minnesota, Joe Mauer. Swing and a high fly ball to left. Jimenez should have this one and makes the grab. One away. So here's the cleanup hitter, Harmon Killebrew. He's got the power, but great contact skills. One of the best contact hitters in the game. Ground ball could be two. There's one. Not in time at first. It's a fielder's choice. And at first, Tory Hunter, the next twin up to hit. Bounced up the middle, and it gets by him. Anderson with a relay throw to second, and he's safe. Just kept it simple, played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from, and there's just no one there to knock it down. Here's Carlos Correa. And there's a foul ball. Kicks and fires. And a foul ball. Well, pretty clear to me, he's trying to go deep right there. But you've got to get a pitch that you can handle. Next offering way One off the two. plate. Rarely will you see a pitcher just to waste a pitch like that. The batter wasn't even tempted to swing. Every pitch needs to have a purpose so that it can set up a following pitch to help you get that out. And that's going to be a double, and it'll score two. One run is in. Another scores. Two runs in on the play. 15-0. That's two consecutive extra base hits for these guys. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters... They take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. So they turn to the veteran pitcher. Ah, oh, that ends the inning, so we take a break. Yasmani Grandal steps to the plate for the White Sox. He was a strikeout victim his first time. First offering misses the mark. Into center. That takes care of Grandal. One down. Now Aloy Jimenez now. That one's in there, 0-1. Now this guy is just filling up the strike zone right now. Don't want to get yourself in an 0-2 hole. You better be ready to pull the trigger on the first pitch. And it finds its way through for a hit. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Throws to second, but he's in there easily. Just a simple ground ball the other way. They've had eyes on it, man. Sometimes that's all you need to do. Just let the ball travel, put the ball in play, and just hope it finds a hole. Oh, and two as he waves at that one. Next offering is fouled back. Jimenez over at second, one down. 
Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. He made him pay for that one. His first homer of the year, and they close the gap. It's 15-2. Now batting. Luis Seven Robert field. now. Luis. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. There's a swing and a miss. No ball, two strikes. One down, base is empty. In the air to left, down the line. Mordeaux settles under this one, and he makes the catch. And there are two down. Just pulled off of it a little bit right now there. That front the shoulder coming open instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. Killebrew makes the catch, and that'll do it. But two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run homer. We're through five. Top six. And now for the Twins, Justin Mordeaux. Leading off to the Twins. The left field. Justin. The pitch. And it's fouled away. <laughs> Swing and a ball hammered left field way back there turning looking and that one is gone He circles the bases his first homer of the year. It's 16 to 2 He's gonna have nightmares about that pitch perfect execution. It's not supposed to produce that result he got hurt by a really good one there, but even a better swing at the plate. Byron Buxton now at the plate. Puts it in the air out towards left center. Can't get their base hit. Around first and hustling for second. In there, that's a double. He quickly went from hitter to base runner. Love when guys make that transition, and he's got speed to put on a show. So digging in, Paul Molitor. Runner. Here's the pitch. Runner breaks for third. Strike in there. Tag. Save. Grandal's throw not in time. Wow, these guys are merciless. I'd say a questionable decision to steal third right there with the big lead. Probably won't be received well in the other dugout. On the ground, Garcia gloves it, throws to first. One away as the second run of the inning scores. Now designated hitter. Rod Carew, the next twin up to hit. Good contact guy, good defender. On the ground, right side. Got him on the off-balance throw. Pitcher gets to the bag for the out. Two outs, space is empty. Here's some real power at the plate. Joe Maurer, known for his rocket arm behind the plate. And that one is lifted in the air. Robert, ranging to his right. He's got it, and that'll end the inning. 9 1 and And welcome back. Well, we go bottom six. Here is Moncada. For the, White Sox. the other way. The third baseman. Mordeaux makes the grab. One pitch and one out. Well, on the mound, very efficient. Able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about every at bat. Anderson stands in now and watches strike one. Anderson. The next pitch misses, and the count is one and one. Gets under and pops it up. And there's two down. And up next for Chicago, Leori Garcia. First offering misses badly for ball one. Two outs. If you're not ready for that pitch, you're just going to swing and miss or pop it up, waste the at-bat. If you're going to let it go, you better be ready to swing it. Left hand batter waits. Swings and pulls it foul to the right side. And a ball and two strikes. And a foul ball, he stays alive.
Next pitch downstairs. And the count's even at two. And the right hander deals. And that's just foul. Next pitch is downstairs. Wow, this guy's really battling up there as if his run is the game winning run. I love his tenacity. And that'll do it. Back at guaranteed rate field, top of inning number seven. Now the cleanup hitter for Minnesota, Harmon Killebrew. And the pitch. And first offering is fouled off. Righty to the plate. Strike two. I'll tell you what. He's embarrassed right now. Never swings at that kind of pitch, especially that early in the count. And here it comes. Gonna count one and two. The pitch. Swing and a miss, and he got him. One gone here. Well, you rarely ever see three curveballs in a row because. That's one of those pitches that's most effective when you haven't seen it recently. You might see three sliders in a row, but right there, he was feeling that curveball and figured he could finish with that pitch. Swing and a ground ball out to short. Slings it across. And a couple of quick outs. Two outs, base is empty. And now Carlos Correa. And he swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. Good pitch right there. Tied him up on the hands. If I'm out there on the bump, I'm going right back in there. Here's your one. Fought off foul. Two down, nobody on. Swing and a miss. That one in the dirt. Grandal gathers, throws the first, and it's in time for the third. Here on the south side, and here's the first baseman, Jose Abreu. And that one fouled off. A little early on that fastball, I'm sure the pitcher taking a note. Look for an off-speed pitch on this next one. 0-2 now. Swing and a miss, and he is down on strikes for the third straight at bat. And now up to the plate, Yasmani Grandal. In there for strike one. Usually when a pitcher's had a dominant outing, he has filled up the strike zone and he's gotten ahead in the count with first pitch strikes. Well, that's exactly what this guy has done in this one. Over 70% first pitch strikes. And he'll two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. That's his second strikeout. Well, when you commit to throwing an inside fastball to your glove side across the strike zone, especially with two strikes, if you're going to miss, you want to miss off the plate in. You do not want to leave it out over the heart of the plate. So that was excellent execution on that pitch. Really tied him up, and he couldn't get a piece at all. Jimenez in the box with two gone, and takes a look at a called strike. Pulled down the line. This one hammered, but it's foul. No, good solid contact right there just a bit out in front of that fastball got to try to stay on that backside just a little bit and down on strikes he goes third out and that ends the frame back here at the ballpark and now Jorge Polanco Leading off from Minnesota, the second baseman Jorge the pitch out of line out towards center and a quick out number one not fooled at all right there he was clearly all over it but sometimes you hit it too hard and right at someone you're looking for one of those loop hits to get a knock sometimes that's out to center field and he pulls up on it and that's a hit Well, clearly he was ready to hit right there. Pretty good spot, hard and inside, but that's a perfect example of keeping your hands inside the ball tight to the body. The ability to take that back up the middle shows his approach is to use the entire field. 
Abreu makes the grab. Two away. So the batting order turns over. Paul Molitor, the next twin up to hit. Now a screamer into the outfield. Lays out and makes the play. Welcome back. Out of the bottom of the eighth. A.J. Pollock at the dish. And that's in for a strike. A.J. Pollock. Next offering down in the dirt. Next offering is foul back. The one two stays alive. To third, Molitor collects, fires across the diamond, one gone to the bottom of the eighth. Good fastball in on the hands, makes the swing a little Up defensive, next. jammed him up right there. The center fielder, Louis. Robert at the play for the third time as he comes up empty there. Kicks and deals. Slapped foul. Got him. And now two gone. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. The designated hitter. Two outs, base is empty. Gavin Sheets steps to the plate for the White Sox. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. The wind of the pitch. Up the middle, and that's a base hit. So a two-out knock keeps the inning alive. And that's a double. Couldn't get any air under it, but he smoked that ball back up the middle. Timing was just perfect. Got great wood on it, and there's just no chance for the infielders with how hard he hit it. And that one pulled foul. Sheets stands at second with two gone. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. So he's got... White Sox going with a new arm, Kyle Crick. He has a great slider with tons of movement. Now it's the Twins DH, Rod Carew. And he deals. Out towards right center field, Robert, as he glides to his left. Brings it in with a nice running grab. And there's one away. Every day during batting practice, these outfielders get about 10 minutes of balls in the gaps. They practice this, and when the game comes, they make the play perfectly. And a foul ball. He'll won. This one rip, but foul to the right. Here comes a pitch. And there's a fly ball deep right field. And that one hops the wall. Throw and it gets away. Nice double right there. Loud contact coming off the bat. Didn't get enough air under to drive it out of here. But you'll take that swing and that result every time. One down. Now here is Harmon Killebrew. That smash towards center. Into the dive, and he got it. So two down now, and here is Tory Hunter. Softly hit the third. Tosses to first, and that'll do it. To the bottom. Back here on the south side. So bottom of the nine. And now the shortstop, Tim Anderson. And there's the strike. Tim Anderson. There's the strike. Well, you can't really adjust your game plan for that last pitch. Guy hasn't thrown it very much. You got to focus on the stuff that he's throwing up there most of the time. 
Only two now. Swag and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. So up next for Chicago, Leori Garcia. Not the best location with the fastball on strike three, but when you're pumping high 90s, you'll get away with some of those. More margin for error. You know, the fastball has become such a huge strikeout pitch in the sport. And I think a lot of it has to do with all the attention and emphasis on improved spin rates. These fastballs are just exploding out of the pitcher's hands and jumping through the zone. Cut on and miss. Struck him out. And there's two down. Tasked with one, two, and three to start this inning, but no trouble so far. I'm sure he'd love to strike out the side here. Make a little statement, but you've got to be composed in this spot. Focus on getting this next guy. you got two good outs. Want to get the third one and avoid the middle of that lineup coming up with a base runner. Could become dangerous. Down to their final strike. And takes low for ball one. And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. Well, this one ends in a blowout for Chris Singleton and our entire crew. I'm John Chambi saying so long from the south side of Chicago.